G'day, thanks for joining us today. We're heading 80 kilometres from Perth to a stunning part of bushland. It's rugged, it's Avon Valley. We've actually been out that way a fair few times. And it was during the planning of this trip that I began to research the name Moondyne. That was the name given to the nature reserve that's out that way. And the name honours Joseph Belitho Jones, or as he became known in WA, Moondyne Joe. So this led me down the proverbial rabbit hole. In order to give you a better feel for this episode, we'll just briefly go back in time. We'll give you a bit of a story about him. Here we go. Little is known of Joseph John's early life. Born in Cornwall in the UK in 1827 and raised as a Roman Catholic, he was the third of six children of blacksmith Thomas Johns and his wife Mary Belitho. Joe was a tall man with black hair and hazel coloured eyes. It's likely that he contracted smallpox in his youth, as later records describe him as pokemarked. His father died in 1833, and at age of about six, Johns and his three brothers took work as copper miners. In 1841, the family was living in Illigan in Cornwall, but by 1848 and age 21, Johns had migrated to Wales, taking work as an iron ore miner, probably at the Clydeck Ironworks. On the 15th of November, 1848, Johns and an associate using the name William Cross, an alias used by convict John Williams, were arrested near Chepstow. They were charged with stealing three loaves of bread, one piece of bacon, several cheeses, as well as other goods. Appearing in court accused of burglary and stealing, the pair pleaded not guilty. On the 23rd of March, they were tried before Judge Sir William Errol. The pair gave a spirited defence. However, Johns became abrasive and disorderly. The member convicted and sentenced to 10 years hard labour. It was a harsh punishment for a charge that saw many others appearing at the time for similar charges, receiving sentences ranging from three weeks to three months. The pair spent the next several months working in a prison party before being transferred to Millbank Prison. On the 1st of January 1850, they were transferred to Pentonville Prison to serve their mandatory six months of solitary confinement. The pair were then transferred to Dartmoor Prison on the 21st of October 1851. But Jones was transferred to the Woolwich Prison Hulk, Justitia, probably for disciplinary reasons. The ship was destroyed by fire and Joe was transferred to the ship Defence. About a year later, he boarded a prison ship, Pyrenees, for transportation to the British penal colony of Western Australia to serve out the remainder of his sentence. He arrived in Van Diemen's Land, now known as Tasmania, in March 1852. The Pyrenees sailed for Western Australia on the 2nd of February, 1853. In reward for good behaviour, Jones was issued with a ticket of leave on arrival and on the 10th of March, 1855, he received a conditional pardon. He then settled in the Avon Valley, one of the most rugged and inaccessible places in the Darling Range. The Aboriginal name for the area was Moondyne. This is where Joe learned his bushcraft. He made a living by partly fencing the springs in the area trapping escaped stock and horses. Often, a reward was offered for the return of lost animals. A remaining relic that can still be seen today is Joe's cage. However, only a few rotting trees that were used as posts remain. Joe occupied these hills from 1853 until the early 1860s. And this is where our journey begins today, at Brockman River, where Joe preyed on the remote settlers during his bush ranging days. So you know a 4 track track's pretty bad when they put up a danger do not enter tape on it. Been down here a few times, it is pretty hairy. Avon Valley National Park in Moondyne is a great location for a quick day trip from the city. In the summer months, this track is more of a scenic drive than any kind of challenge for a four-wheel drive. That said, there is one steep challenging descent down to the river where you'll find Sapper Camp, equipped with toilets and barbecues. We unfortunately didn't head down there on this trip the track was incredibly washed out. 37 Mile Break is a pleasant campsite with a toilet, fire pit and picnic table. Camping fees apply in Avon Valley National Park. It's $10 per couple and $2 per child. Dieback is a real threat within the park and 
vehicles need to be clean and free of mud before entry. No open fires are allowed during the summer months and camping is only by prior arrangement with the ranger. Aborigines referred collectively to the hills on the north side of Avon as Moondot and this is where Joe learned his bushcraft and later adopted his bushranger nickname. It is... It's pouring down. It's been pouring down for a while and the puddles are getting deeper and deeper and we've got a huge one in front of us. Uh, it's going to be interesting. We've got the snatch attached to the back just in case. And it looks like it's we're going downhill so the puddles are getting bigger and bigger and the rain is getting heavier and heavier. So this is an interesting trip indeed. This wasn't meant to be much of a four wheel drive trip at all but it's certainly turned into one. branded stallion and branded it with his own mark. This was effectively horse stealing. The horse was taken as evidence and John was placed in the 2J locker. Sometime during the night, John broke out of his cell and stole the horse once more, taking also the local magistrate's new saddle and bridle. He was caught the next day, but while on the run, he killed the horse and cut his brand out of the hide, destroying the evidence. Consequently, he received only a three year sentence for jailbreaking, whereas a typical sentence for horse stealing was more than 10 years. While Johns was serving his sentence, there was a series of convict escapes and attempted escapes, but Johns remained well behaved. His good behavior earned him a remission on his sentence and he was released on a ticket of leave in February 1864. He then found work on a farm in Kelmscott, run by Henry Martin. In January 1865, a steer named Bright belonging to William Wallace was killed and Johns was accused of the deed. He was arrested on the 29th of March, found guilty on the 5th of July and sentenced to 10 years. Johns was to protest his innocence of this crime for the rest of his life. He was determined not to serve what he felt was an unjust sentence and in early November he and another prisoner absconded from a work party. They were on the run for nearly a month, during which time they committed a number of small robberies. It was during this time that Johns first adopted the nickname Moondine Joe. They were finally caught 37 kilometres east of York by a party of policemen that included Tommy Windditch, an Aboriginal tracker. For absconding and for being in possession of a firearm, Moondine Joe was sentenced to 12 months in irons and transferred to Fremantle Prison. In April 1866, Moondine Joe sent a petition to the Chief Justice and received four years of his sentence. This was apparently unsatisfactory to him, for in July he received a further six months in irons for trying to cut the lock out of his door. Early in August, he succeeded in escaping 
After cutting off his irons, he met up with three other escapees, and together they roamed the bush around Perth, and narrowly escaping capture on a number of occasions. Near the end of the month, one of the gang was captured by police. Realising that the gang could not elude the police forever, Moondyne Joe formulated a plan to escape the colony by travelling overland to the colony of South Australia. This would be a long and arduous journey through extremely arid land and the gang would have to be very well equipped if they were to stand any chance of success. On the 5th of September, Moondyne Joe equipped his company by committing the biggest robbery of his career by stealing supplies and equipment from the 2J store of an old enemy, James Everett. The gang then started travelling east along the explorer Charles Hunt's established route. Their tracks were discovered by police on the 26th of September, about 160 kilometres east of York. A team of police then set out after them and they were captured on the 29th of September 1866 at Boodle and Soak, about six kilometres northwest of the present day site of the town of Westonia, approximately 300 kilometres northeast of Perth. As punishment for escaping and for the robberies committed whilst on the run, Moondyne Joe received five years hard labour on top of his remaining sentence. Extraordinary measures were taken to ensure Moondyne did not escape again. He was sent to Fremantle Prison and kept in the yard with his neck chained to the iron bar of a window while a special escape proof cell was made for him. The stone walled cell was lined with Jarrah sleepers and over 1,000 nails and was almost airproof and lightproof. Moondyne Joe was kept in his cell on a bread and water diet with only one to two hours of exercise a day. In early 1867, due to his diminishing health, Moondyne Joe was sent to work breaking stone in the open air, but rather than permit him to leave the prison, the stone was ordered to be dumped in the corner of the prison yard, where Moondyne Joe worked under constant supervision from the guards. The then governor, John Hampton, was so confident with the arrangement, he was heard to say to Moondyne Joe, if you get out again, I'll forgive you. However, the rock broken by Moondyne Joe was not removed regularly, and eventually a pile grew up until it obscured the guard's view of him below the waist. Partially hidden behind the pile of rocks, he occasionally swung his sledgehammer at the limestone wall of the prison. And on the 7th of March, 1867, Moondyne Joe escaped through a hole he had made in the prison wall. Despite an extensive manhunt, no sign of him was found and he would not be recaptured for nearly two years. He did not return to any of his old haunts and he committed no crimes, so the authorities received very little information about him. Also, many of the convicts were encouraged by Moondyne Joe's audacious escape and a number of escapes were attempted in the following months, so he was quickly forgotten. A few days before the second anniversary of his escape, Moondyne Joe tried to steal some wine from the cellars at Horton Winery. By chance, the owner had been helping with a police search and afterwards invited a group of police back to the vineyard for a drink. When the owner entered the cellar, Moondyne assumed that he was discovered and made a run for the door and into the hands of the police. He was promptly returned to prison, sentenced to a further 12 months half to be in solitary confinement for absconding. And on the 22nd of March, 1869, he was sentenced to an additional four years in irons for breaking and entering. Moondyne Joe made at least one more attempt to escape, attempting in February, 1871, to create a key for his cell in the carpenter's workshop, but was unsuccessful. Eventually, in April, 1871, General Wakeford heard from Moondyne Joe of Hampton's promise after verifying with Superintendent Lafroy that those words were spoken, Wakeford informed the current governor, Frederick Weld, who agreed that further punishment would be unfair. And Moondyne Joe was given a ticket of leave in May 1871. The remainder of John's life consisted of periods of good behaviour and the occasional minor misdemeanour with brief jail terms. In January 1879, he married a widow named Louisa Hearn and they spent some time prospecting for gold near Southern Cross. In 1881, while exploring the countryside around Carydale, he discovered Moondyne Cave. In 1893, John's wife Louisa died at the age of 40 and the death affected him greatly. 
Years after, he began acting strangely and was eventually found to be mentally ill. He died of senile dementia in the Fremantle Lunatic Asylum, now the Fremantle Arts Centre building, on the 13th of August 1900 and was buried in the Fremantle Cemetery. His tombstone bears the word "rided," meaning freedom in the Welsh language. Stealing food from a rich man Feed my mama, feed my soul Bow Street runner Shackles in chain, a gaslight cold Prison oak on the river turns Heading out to the land of the fire and flood Two long years I paid my dues Chained to the English mud Riding in the sky Driving the rain I'm a drowning man Oh man, I'm running I'm a man hiding I'm a man cold Land of forest fleas and flies And blighted lies. Now work the ground for the settler man. End up running on a chain gang. Running on a chain gang. When I turn bush ranger, well I'm a bush ranger, like Harry Morgan.